big uh, fight night headlined by the unification bout in the welterweight division. How, how great is it for you to bring a fight like that to Ireland? Yeah, this is the first time we've had Amazon back uh, since he left the war zone. Um, this is something that you know it's very it's very important for us, but also I think he wants to send a message to the world that you know he's here fighting for Ukraine and there's still a, a situation over there and. Um, he was torn about really leaving, uh, but um, you know he made the decision uh, with his family to to get out of the war zone and, and 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 go to America and train and go to American Top Team and train with all the guys at Dan Lambert's gym. And he's here now. I think this is a uh, important moment in the history of our company. I mean, this is something that's very unique has never happened before in my 37 years of being in the fight promotion business. And uh, if you saw that video that uh, that they made of of, uh, of, of the feature piece of of Amazon, it was really, it's really, really special. And so, please, if you uh, get a chance to watch it, it's, it's amazing. The, the fight itself, you know, I asked uh, Yaroslav yesterday if he wins it, is he the best welterweight in the world? And there's a few divisions in Bellator at the moment where you could argue that they are, regardless of promotion, the best. Yes. Do you think Amazon are sorely if they win on, on Saturday is the best? I think that starting at 205, I think we got the best 205 on the planet, and I think we got a deep division there. 185, Johnny Evelyn, I think he's the, the best. Uh, in the world at 185, and that and that even you know Dan Lambert said the same thing to me. He's the best 185 pound on the planet. So you know this is not just like a, me speaking. This is a consensus among all the top gym owners, all the managers. You talk to people that know this business uh, at 170. I think both these guys are number one, number two, and I think the UFC champs number three. Until something happens, I mean we'll see. But um, you know when you when you talk about the amount of depth of talent uh, that we have at Bellator right now, it's impressive. I mean it's taking a long time to get here, but now we have a roster that just can really do a lot of damage all over the world, so I'm really proud of it and uh, proud of my guys that help us put the roster together, and, and here we get to go, now we get to watch all these great fights happen, so if you remember that first fight, it was amazing, that first fight they had a couple years back, wow, and uh, that was in a venue where COVID was still uh, very active and we were shut down, it was a closed environment, there was no fans allowed, I remember just the feeling of a little bit of being a little bit, you know, weird feeling because there's no fans, there's no cheering, but these guys fought their hearts out and, and uh, you know, now they get to, you know, rewind it with a big fans, probably the best fans in the world here cheering for them. I think it's going to be amazing. You mentioned Irish fans there and I think there was a little bit of disappointment with the card and that, you know, James Gallagher wasn't on the card. He was on another card in, in America, Liam McCourt, yeah. biggest fight for a career, not on this card as well. You know, obviously Peter Queeley had the big fights, but not as big a fight this time. What was your kind of reaction to some of that reaction from the Irish fans? Well, you know, listen, it's timing is the key, right? Because uh, we can't put everybody on the card when you know they want to be on a fight card. It's, it really has they have, they have to fit in the rotation, and you know we're managing you know 250 athletes and doing you know. <coughs> let's say 18 fights a year so it's just a matter of timing of when they fit into the rotation and you know I think Leah's got a great fight coming up at Pachanga um, I think Kuli's got a great fight ahead and um, you know we'll be back so we'll we'll, we'll mix it up again in, 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 in September Is there any update on James? Obviously uh, his fight fell out but we didn't really get an update on what happened Is there any update on him if that fight will be rescheduled or anything like that? I think I think James pulled out of the fight and the exact you know decision why I'm not really sure but I think it was something to do with uh, a medical situation. So I think it was an injury involved. So, uh, you know, hopefully he'll get better and uh, he'll come back and be as strong as ever. Is there any update at heavyweight? Obviously we had the Ryan Bader fight against Fedor and he won that in the same night. Maybe number one contender fight that ended up being a draw uh, with Steve Maury in that fight. Is there any kind of inclination who's going to be next at heavyweight? I mean, you know, listen, we have a, a very good heavyweight division and, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing Moldowski fight. Uh, in San Jose, and then we're just going to mix it up and you know go back to the drawing board and and put that, put together you know the best fights in, in the in the weight class that we can. So uh, Ryan Bader probably he probably won't fight till the end of the year, um, but we'll have somebody really good for him by then. Any update on some of the free agents? Any talks with Francis Ngannou or Nathan Diaz or anyone like that? Yeah, we you know listen, it's a uh, it's a very fluid situation, and you know we're in talks with both of them, and let's see what happens. Yeah. If you were to sign someone. Say like Francis Ngannou, who turned down, by all accounts, a seven million dollar contract with the UFC. Could you go back to pay-per-view with a fighter like?
like that, or is pay per view something that's in the past for Bellator? Well, I know that um, you know from from my perspective, when you talk about signing him to Bellator, we're also talking about having a conversation with him and Stephen, which happened earlier this week, about getting him into Showtime pay per view boxing too. So uh, I think we have a, a great company to offer him both sides of the combat sports uh, business that he would like to, which is fight in MMA and also box. I think we're a great fit, and so uh, uh, there's ongoing discussions, so we'll see what happens. Uh, Deontay Wilder was mentioning that he wouldn't mind uh, having an MMA fight, maybe a two-fight deal. Would you like to have Deontay Wilder versus Francis Ngannou? Yeah, give him my number and have him call me. <laughs> um, you spoke about um, the situation with Amosov and Logan. Do you think it will be difficult for Logan to take that fight like as, a, as he would with anyone else? Um, because, I mean, Amosov has just come back from war. Yeah, I think, listen, I think that, uh, you know, Logan Storley is in shape. He's ready to go. He ha had a great camp. I know they brought Crazy Bob in to help the camp, round off the camp, and they spent a lot of time in Florida for the last eight, eight weeks. So they, they put together a, an amazing group of people to get him ready. He's ready. He's not going to be sidetracked by any of the, you know, um, let's say any other story that Amazon has bringing into this fight. So I think it's hard not to look at what Amazon has gone through, but I, I can tell you this, Logan's here to win, and if you watch that first fight, it was very close, and uh, I'm expecting five round, a, a five-round amazing fight. So to me, that's 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 what we're expecting, and I think that both these guys are in great shape. I mean, look at them. They're, they're, ready, they're ready to go, man. It's, it's going to be exciting. Same question. And Patricio, um, is the Jeremy Kennedy, uh, Pedro Carrillo fight going to be the number one contender fight, is, or is there someone in, in mind for the 145 pound title? Yeah, you know what? Um, that's something that we're going to probably take a look back sometime next week and uh, look at all the different weight classes that we're still matching. Uh, but, um, you know, we have some really exciting fights to announce uh, next week and the week after. And so just be patient and we'll, we'll get that you. Come on, you surely have one for us now. Here in Ireland. Question for you. Is yeah, go on. Jackson going to sign with the Ravens? That's what I want to do. It's just a t-shirt. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I go with yes on that one. <laughs> uh, just a, a question about the women's featherweight division. Uh, Chris Seiberg seemed to come out and say that she was maybe expecting to, to fight either Katzingano or, or Liam McCord in Dublin. Mm -hmm. You know, wh when, when do you think, wh what will be the next fight? Is it is a case that McCord versus Ngano is for the number one contendership? Obviously, we've got Janae Harding and Sinead Kavanagh here. It has to be. That has to be the number one contender. I mean, we've been waiting for Kat to, you know, uh, fight Chris for a long time, but now she's fighting. Yeah, not too much. Whoever wins, I think we'll be natural fit to fight Chris and uh, you know we're still going through some contractual stuff with Chris uh, we, we we hope to have that finished you know in the next couple of weeks I'm gonna go back give her a call when I get back from uh, Dublin but um, it's it's something that I think that we're we're, we're very much gonna be committed to having her fight uh, sometime in late summer if Liam McCourt wins that fight against Zingano would you foresee that title fight being in Dublin sure why not you know why not that'd be amazing it's uh, it's something that the fan like the fans here are unlike any place else in the world, and and I think that uh, they would love Chris here. I think it would be an amazing fight. We would take it to Brazil. Who knows? You know, there's a lot of uh, good opportunity in Brazil as well. So, you know, we haven't identified a location, but we have. You know, I, I always like to take a look at what the fight and what it looks like, and, and then shuffle the deck, and then go from there. Yeah, just a couple more questions on the Irish side. Uh, th these events have been fantastic for the SPG guys. You know, a whole heap of them here today, as always. There's a great relationship between Bellator and SPG. Do you foresee maybe opening that up to other gyms in the country as well? Um, any other fighters from different gyms fighting on these cars yeah, moving absolutely. forward? I mean, I think that, uh, listen, if you're a top, top fighter uh, and you're a blue chip prospect, you know, we, we will find you uh, uh, or give us a call. So uh, there's going to be opportunity for a lot of different, you know, gyms, gyms to participate. It's not just going to be one gym. I mean, in, in, like in, anywhere we travel in the world, it's, you know, we're, we're I think, pretty open to having the best fighters uh, in that region come and compete. And, and really, I, I love it because we always find like a, a diamond in the rough somewhere uh, uh, when we're traveling the, on the road. Brian Moore is fighting uh, Luke Iovine tomorrow night. He's been calling for a fight with Leandro Higo for a long, long time now. Obviously, James got that fight, but it fell through. Mm -hmm. If Brian wins this fight, will he finally get the Higo fight? Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure if they're going to rebook Higo, but, you know, like I said, when we get back to San Jose, we'll figure it out and, uh, and, 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 and book Higo, and let's see what happens tomorrow night. Because to me, I like to
like to see what the fight looks like, you know, and let's see how, how they both perform. And maybe they both look great. Maybe one looks great. Or maybe, you know, it, it really depends on what happens with the fight tomorrow. It's, it's, you know, Brian has put on some great performances, but he's, the finish has eluded him for the last little while. Is it that finish that he needs to kind of really, you know, assert himself? You know, I'll tell you, it, that, that would be great. But really, in this business, you just got to keep winning and you'll eventually get your shot. Just one more. Just a very Irish specific question. So the fights on Saturday night would be on Virgin Media and the ones in the uh, in this region are always on Virgin Media free for everyone. But a lot of the American fights are on Virgin Media Sports and it's only available in the big cities. Like a very small percentage of that country can actually watch them. Mm-hmm. Is that something you're kind of aware of or that you've spoken to Virgin Media about? Because like a lot of people in a lot of you know big towns and big cities in the country can't actually watch the big Bar- Bellator cards from America. I see. Well, I, I was not aware of that, but um, that's what I'll talk to David Green about it. and uh, he's probably better equipped to answer that because he handles all our international distribution. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks.